pour it. Good. Jerry, do you need one? I got one. Good morning. Are you ready to begin? Is it warm enough to begin? Good to see you today. Welcome to worship. We're going to begin with some uh, announcements, prayer requests, and a prayer, and then Carl will come and begin uh, leading our worship. I want to welcome uh, new members Larry and Pat Bright. Uh, these are the parents of Holly Lavender. And so when you see them, uh, make sure to give them a good greeting and a welcome to our congregation. I want to remember next Saturday is Walk for Water here at the uh, parking lot. Registration at 9.30, walk begins at 10, or you can also do it virtually. Uh, make sure you get registered for that. Several prayer requests, as I mentioned. Let's remember Don Ash's mother, Winnie, uh, in her battle against cancer. And also, um, with that family, Cammie's brother, uh, Alan Sams, had a heart attack last week. He had been on life support the entire week and passed away on Friday evening. So let's be praying for Cammie and her family. Again, her brother's name was Alan Sams. We got a note from Kelly Snoke. Uh, please be praying for my cousin's wife, Stacy Beery. She was hit head on by another vehicle on Thursday morning. She's in a medically induced coma and has multiple fractures and organ damage. Again, that name is Stacy Berry. Remember to keep Vicki Peoples' mother in your prayers. She suffered a stroke several days ago. And also Sue Goodman, who uh, is in a battle against cancer as well. And there's some evidence that that has advanced. I think I got all the, all the, um, today we're blessed to have a guest, a uh, guest speaker, David Parks is with us. He's been with us for several weeks, worshiping here in the lot with us. They are camping at the uh, Lancaster campgrounds and his wife, Marilyn is with him and she is sister to Mary Mitchell. So that's the connection there. And uh, if you've been here long enough, you've heard him speak before because he spoke for you at some time in the past. And uh, he's also do, in charge of uh, online worship for the church in Phoenix, where he's an elder and minister, right? And so you're doing two services today, he gets double time. Uh, but we're glad to have him and, and invite him to share a message with us today. It's David Parks. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing from him here in a moment. So we're gonna turn it over to Carl. Let's, let's pray first and begin our time together. Holy Father, thank you for the day you've given us and the place to assemble. Uh, thank you most of all for the church that your son died for and the opportunity to serve in it. Thank you that we can always call on your name and you hear us. Uh, we've named several that have experienced loss or, or fighting illness and we pray you'll bless each one, and there may be others here that haven't been named. Uh, we know we're all in a fight against uh, the virus in our, in our world right now. We pray you continue to work and bless and keep us healthy, and help us to be wise in the way we handle all those things. 
Uh, thank you for Jesus, our Savior. Help us to remember him and honor his name and live for him this week in all faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, family. Our songs are going to be, we're not going to have as many today just with the heat. But for this first song, if you're able to stand with me, the song is You Are the Song That I Sing, if you were following along in your app. <clears throat> and while you guys are looking that up, you guys are far away, so you have to sing out. Um, I like it when you get better. <laughs> I know we have social distancing, we have to keep that, but we've got like 35 feet, <laughs> so it's good to come a little bit closer, all right? <clears throat> So we're going to have this song. We'll have another song. Right, right after this song will be... You are the words in the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the mighty God. You are the King of all kings. So now I that you gave to me. You are the song that I sing. You are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the you are the harmony, praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God, you are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the songs that you gave to me, you are the song that I sing. <clears throat> all right, our next song before the Lord's Supper will be Come Share the Lord. Come, share the Lord. Sorry, we had, had a nap while around here. I'm waving, too, so that's... <clears throat> we gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. here we in turn forgive all wrongs he joins us here he breaks the bread the lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead the one we love the most is now a gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are a family of which the Lord is head. The one seen he meets us here in the breaking of the bread we'll gather soon where angels sing we'll see the glory of our lord and coming king now we anticipate the feast for which we wait Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. You may be seated.
Good morning. So Independence Day, um, I think you all probably saw a lot of U.S. flags hanging, as did I. Um, hung some on my front porch, and to be honest, uh, there was a sense of pride and gratitude for those flags and the freedom with it. Um, and one thing that came to my mind, that freedom's been bought with blood, similar to the This Independence Day, we get to focus on the cross and that freedom. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom we have through Christ, most of all his body that was given to us. And we just pray we focus on that in this moment. Amen. And as I mentioned, the, the blood that was shed, a lot of things are said to have been bought with blood. Uh, there are certain safety signs. There are certain emblems that a blood sacrifice was needed. So at this moment, let's give thanks for the blood uh, that represents Christ and his sacrifice for our freedom. Dear Lord, we thank you for Jesus, the blood he shed for us. We understand that that was a price that was paid uh, that we owed, we could not pay. And we're just so thankful that Christ shed that so freely that we may have freedom through him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our next song, which will also be the song before our lesson is given, is Faith is the Victory. Faith is the Victory. I just wanted to take a moment also, I know it's kind of an abbreviated set of songs, so take these and, and try to sing them at, at home with each other or amongst each other, amongst your friends and family. <clears throat> it's always good and uplifting to, to just sing a hymn. All right, faith is the victory. Encamped mm. along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know. That overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in hell. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame, will vanquish all the hosts of night. In Jesus' conquering name, faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Well, I don't know if it's appropriate to preach in a hat or not, so I'll go ahead and take it off. Isn't this a beautiful day the Lord has made? A day to rejoice and to be glad in it, because God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. But sometimes we don't feel that way. 
Sometimes we have a year where we just be glad when it's over, when we really don't know whether we can hold it together or not because of the challenges that have come. There are people, uh, I see uh, memes on Facebook today where people are, are joking about just canceling 2020 and starting over again with 2021. And most of us, if we've lived very long, have known that year that we had wished would never have happened. And I remember that year for me. It was a year that, that began, uh, the bad news began on, uh, I got home from church, Marilyn and I did one Sunday morning and the phone was ringing. And I picked the phone up and it was a nurse telling me that uh, they had called the EMS to take my dad to Marietta Memorial Hospital and they didn't know whether he was going to make it or not. So we packed everything up quickly and we made that quick six or seven hour drive down to Marietta from Waterford, Michigan. And once we got there, uh, we found out he had made it through the day. We didn't know if he'd make it through the night. And four o'clock that morning, I was hit with shingles. Shingles bad enough that for the next week, uh, I was in a wheelchair being wheeled in and out to visit my father who was dying. And then for the next couple of weeks, I had to walk with a cane, the shingles were so bad. And, at, and so for the next several weeks, we're making that trip back and forth, that seven hour drive to, to visit dad and to offer encouragement to the family as, uh, as he's in the process of dying now in a nursing home. And we had a trip scheduled, a, a vacation to Florida. We decided, well, we, you know, we've had about all we can take. We just better go ahead and go anyway. So we packed off to Florida and got there late in the afternoon. And early that morning, the phone rang. And it was my brother. My brother was saying, your baby sister's five-year-old son is about to be unplugged at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. We need you home. So we, got on the, so we got on the phone and we discovered, no, there is not a flight out of Tampa, but if you can get to Orlando, we can get you back to Michigan today. And so we made that quick trip, turned in the rental and canceled the, the hotel and the whole vacation. And we get back to Detroit, get in the car and halfway through that seven hour trip back, it's now been 24 hours. And I'm driving and Marilyn is asleep out of exhaustion and, and I'm in so much pain I can just heart hardly stand it. I'm hurting and I'm realizing and I'm praying to God, God, you've got to help me with this. Because when I get there, I'm going to have to be there for my baby sister and I don't know how much more of this I can handle. And as I'm praying, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute now, Peter promised us that he, is, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of the Son, 1 Peter, 2 Peter 1, verse 3. And Paul promised us that he has given us everything that to fully equip us to every good work in 2 Timothy chapter 3. The answer has got to be in Scripture. And so I'm driving in the middle of the night at 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm going through my mind, where is that Scripture I need to get me through that to be there for my sister when I get there? And finally it came to me, John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go now to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. For I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And I look back at those words and I thought, think about what the apostles are going through. They're in every bit as much pain right at that moment as I am now. Because they had began the week with that glorious entry where the, where the, the miles of road were, were lined with people that were throwing their garments in, on the, in the middle of the street and cutting down palm branches and declaring, Hosanna save, Hosanna save. They were expecting a warrior king and he had entered the city. Why, he had raised the dead tw at least twice we know of. He had stopped a storm with a single sentence. He had walked on water. He had fed 20,000 people with a handful of food. And now the people are behind him, and we're going to beat the Romans. And finally, Jesus gets it through their head that night. No, I'm not that kind of king. I'm a king of a different kind of kingdom, and tonight 
I'm going to be betrayed, and tomorrow I'm going to be crucified. Can you imagine the shock as he's finally gotten through to them that he's going to be crucified, and the pain and the suffering? And his answer was, let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus, what do you mean, don't let my hearts be troubled? You're going to be crucified tomorrow. Believe in God. So the first step to not letting your heart be in trouble is believe in God. How does that help? Well, think about David on a starlit night as he looks up and he looks around and he declares, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I consider the heavens just the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you put in place, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Behold, you, you've made him a little lower than the angels and you've given him dominion over all of these things. <coughs> oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You know, you look at this magnificent marble we call the earth and a quarter of a million miles away, you have the, you, you have the, the moon circling. 93 million miles away, man, that's a long way. You've got the sun. You go out a few billion miles and you've got nine planets and those nine planets are only one solar system of the millions of solar systems that make up our galaxy. And that galaxy is one of, scientists now know, over 500 billion galaxies. And I ask you this, if God is going to create a place, God doesn't need this place. God is spirit. And God existed before there was any matter. What does a physical, a spiritual God need with a physical matter? Absolutely nothing. He created this for us. And if he created it for us, why did he create such a, an enormous universe? Because the heavens declare the glory of God. You look around you. And you go out on a starlit night and you think 500 billion. God is saying, people, this is who I am. This is how powerful I am. I have the power to meet your needs. If he can hang the moon and the stars, he can meet your needs. And so when he says, so when Jesus is his first answer, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. He has the power to make this work for good. And we know that he did. They didn't realize he'd be raised three days later. But all they needed to know was, we have an awesome, powerful God who is able to deliver. So he says, believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. It's as if he's saying, <laughs> you look around you at the 500 billion uh, galaxies, and you think that's something. When you get to heaven, nothing yet. Because I have the power to see that you indeed did all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. And the day is going to come when you are going to see this, this whole universe disappear. And you're going to see the new Jerusalem descend with God as your neighbor. And you're going to see God himself reach out and wipe away every one of those tears. And there'll be no suffering, there'll be no sorrow. And then I thought of, as I'm thinking of how worn out and exhausted I am, of Isaiah chapter 40, when people were discouraged at the horrible things that were about to happen. And God tells Isaiah to say, comfort, comfort my people. Have you not heard? Has it not been told you? Have you not understood from the beginning? Have you not known from the foundation of the earth? It is he that sits above the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants are but grasshoppers. This stretches the heavens out like a curtain and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. That brings the princes of the earth and the judges to nothing. Lift your eyes on high and ask, who has made these things? Behold, the nations are a drop in the bucket, they're just dust on the scale. Have you not heard, have you not known that the Lord is the everlasting God? Even the youth shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. 
they shall walk and not faint. And I thought as I was driving down the I-77 that night at four o'clock in the morning, I may not have the strength to run, but when I get there to see my sister, I will have the strength to walk because I believe God. The next time you are at your rope's end and you just don't know how you can possibly stand it again, remember this, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe God, the God who created the universe. And that's nothing. Three days later, Jesus said, you know, destroy this temple and in three days, I'll raise it up again. Believe in God and believe in the one who raised himself three days later. If he had the power to raise himself from the dead, he has the power to raise you from a sinful dead life and to give you everything that you need to live this life. That's why Paul was able to say that my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and grace and glory. Perhaps you're here today and you need strength, you need encouragement. Let's pray for just a moment for that strength and that courage. Almighty God, all of us that have lived very long have had that year that we just wished had never happened. At the loss of a loved one, at the loss of personal health, the loss of income and occupation, whatever. And those who haven't will sooner or later because we live in a fallen world. And Father, when that time comes, help us to believe in you and in your son and in the glory to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Dave, very much for that lesson. This next song, The Glory Land Way will be our last song before our closing prayer. <clears throat> I know it's getting warm out, but if everybody's able, can you please stand with me for this song? And as we sing this song, let's think as we go into this week, let's look way forward, not even to next Sunday, but to where we know our anchor is. <clears throat> I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer for I'm in the glory land way. You may be seated. Um, real quick before I pray, uh, my when pre Stephanie was pregnant with Griffin, we were visiting my grandma at a, a nursing home, and she'd had a stroke a couple years before, had a hard time communicating and understanding things. But Steph was very pregnant, and Grandma kept putting her hand on Steph's belly, kind of trying to communicate. She understood, I think, what was, you know, happening there, and she kept saying, "Oh, are you in the best? Are you in the best? Are you in the best?" And she was trying to say, you're in the best way, I think is what she was trying to say. And just when Carl was leading that song, it kind of reminded me that, you know, we're in the glory land way. We are in the best way with the journey that we're on. Will you bow with me, please? 
Father in heaven, we're just thankful that we're here. Father, we're thankful for the family here at, at, that meets at Lancaster. And Father, we pray that, like the song we just sang, that we will realize that we're in a bright and shining way, that we're on a path that even when times are tough here on this earth, we have the promise of heaven. And Father, we pray, just as the lesson that was brought for us uh, this morning, that when we all go through the hard times, the hard days, hard weeks, hard months, hard years, Father, when we get discouraged and feel like we can't keep going, Father, we pray that we'll believe in you first, and believe in uh, Jesus, believe in the resurrection of Jesus, and believe that we will get to go to heaven someday because of that. Thank you for that promise. Father, uh, I want to pray just real quick for uh, the elders here. Father, I want to pray that you bless their leadership, give them wisdom, give them patience. Give each of us as members of this family um, just the willingness to be supportive of the elders and willing to do whatever they ask us to do to make your kingdom on this earth better. Father, I want to pray for Don and Cami Ash as they're dealing with family members with health and loss of life. Be, be with Don and Sharon Jacobs as they're uh, dealing with a recent surgery. Be with Steve and Pam Starner and loss of family members. Uh, Father, we also want to pray that you'll be with Greg and Angela Camerata. Uh, thank you for the work they did here and bless their move. Uh, Father, we again just pray that you'll watch over the elders and just give them strength with the, the burden they have. Father, and just be with us this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Two of them, two of them, our last time. Oh, yeah. Try to get one tomorrow. Uh-oh, who left her? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I just got on TV. <laughs>
Is it powered off? Uh, yes, it looks like. I can check it. I'm trying to remember how to... I don't know. I don't think they keep this connected. So that'll need to go in. This does? Yeah. Should I break it down? Mm, I don't know. You could just take it in like that. And everybody's sitting way far back. I know. How you doing, sir? Hey, okay. Uh, we got this disconnected. We're just going to take this in. We don't need to break it down, do we? Mm -hmm. The m microphone. Hi, Bob. Hello. How are you? Okay, how are you doing? Is this your phone? No, I think it might be Mark's. 